Hello, ocean enthusiasts. Now today I'd like to speak about quartz watches. And quartz watches and movements are often dismissed as being inferior to mechanical movements and don't offer as much of uh, hor horological prestige or, or historical interest as one sees from mechanical movements. However, I feel this is rather unfair because these movements are, whilst in many cases produced to a lesser quality than mechanical movements, there are examples where one has movements which are produced to an incredible level of craftsmanship, quality, and also innovation. And so today I'd like to pro provide uh, five examples of movements and watches which really do show a technological mastery of their, their respective realm. And so these are movements which experiment with elements such as the thinness of a movement, its accuracy, its resistance to the elements, or its sheer beauty in terms of the craftsmanship put into it, taking advantage of the advantages which, uh, which quartz movements already have. But before I begin the video, I would like to just issue the statement that uh, next week, instead of Wednesday's video, the video will be published later on in the week, uh, likely Friday, as a result of, uh, of some slight uh, inconveniences and problems. But don't worry, there will be a second video next week, but it will come slightly later on, f on Thursday or Friday rather than the Wednesday, whilst it'll resume as normal on Sunday, and of course the following Wednesday after that. Now the first piece I'd like to speak about comes from a relatively old line of watches from Longines. And Longines have a history of, of innovation, certainly their mechanical movements in the 60s, 70s, and even the 80s were very, very impressive before they were bought during that, uh, that period of turmoil in the industry. And this piece is the Conquest VHP. And the VHP name was uh, a name given to some thermocompensated quartz movements, which were first released in 1984 from Longines. And these movements were designed to, to ride the wave and tide of very impressive, newly innovated quartz movements during that period. And these pieces had a 10-year battery life and, uh, and a thermocompensated movement. And so one had a situation where these watches really were trying to, uh, to aim for a, a very particular area of the market when quartz was believed to be the future for watchmaking. And with the modern VHP, by comparison to the original Conquest VHP, which had a very period-correct case, so a case which had an integrated bracelet and a design which today does look somewhat dated, although I do feel is still rather charming, Longines have gone for a, a much more universal look nowadays, and something which I think was a very wise choice. The case for the non-chronograph versions is 41 to 43 millimeters, depending on the version, and the chronograph is between 42 and 44, whilst they're also available in PVD versions, and all have brushed and polished finishes on the crown, as well as the, the bezel, as well as the case, and there are options for bracelets and straps as well. But the general look of these watches is very contemporary with beveled, polished hands, and these large numerals on the dial, whilst also having luminous indices, and an attractive style of chapter ring running around the edge of the dial. But of course it's the movement which I'm speaking about today, and so they do have a set of very impressive uh, features for the price these watches are being offered for. And with a plus and minus five second a year accuracy, these are incredibly accurate for watch, especially at this more affordable price. But crucially, these watches offer a bit more than that by comparison to, for example, the high accuracy, high frequency quartz bullivers, which one's seen at a similar sort of price range. Because these watches also offer a perpetual calendar, which is not something you normally see on a watch like this, and certainly not on a mechanical movement for this sort of price. And so I do think it's impressive they're able to offer this, a calendar which is able to account for the, the amount of days in February, and also account for the number of days each month, which is something which is a very minor annoyance for a mechanical watch wearer, but nonetheless, if you want something which you can simply set, it is inconvenient, especially if you have a quartz movement, because having to reset these sorts of things means that you can't really benefit from the full accuracy of the movement, which otherwise would be, would be extremely helpful. These watches are also designed to, uh, to have interesting technologies aside from that, such as gear position detection. And this is a feature which I think is very clever, considering the fact that these watches are aimed at a slightly more sort of sporting audience than a traditional dress watch, especially with their crown guards and 50 meter watch resistance. Because these pieces offer a, a setting or a setup whereby if the watch is knocked and the hands are misaligned, the movement will realign to its previous position, its accurate position, in order to be able to, to keep uh, good timing and allow you to be able to read the watch accurately. And versions of these watches are made, of course, with three hands and also with a chronograph setup. But I think the most interesting is perhaps the, the newest addition to the collection, which is the GMT version. And in addition to adding a GMT hand, you can now jump between time zones digitally rather than jumping between time zones in the traditional sense. And Longines have been very clear they don't intend this watch to be a smart watch, but just intend to be able to make a watch which functions better. And I think this is an interesting philosophy to follow, and I think does also demonstrate the fact that uh, they do want to innovate in new directions, such as their use of uh, flash setting. And this is uh, through the use of uh, an app which one can get on one's phone, which allows you to, um, to, to use the flash of your phone, the flash uh, light by the, the camera, 
to be able to set the watch to your respective time zone via the use of, of Morse code being shown uh, through the, the flashes of the, um, of the, the flash. And so this allows the, the watch to very quickly change time zone uh, based on your phone, as opposed to having to set the watch via the crown, which I think is a very interesting technology. And whilst I personally don't know whether I would use it, I think it's certainly an interesting direction and, and something interesting for a quartz movement. And these watches vary in price between £690 for the smaller versions with three hands, up to £1,380 for some chronograph versions on a bracelet with the, the blacked out version in PVD. Now the second watch I'd like to speak about will come as no surprise to people who watch the channel regularly, because it's the Zin UX. But I think speaking about the origins of this design and the way it's come about makes this watch even more interesting than it already is. Now the Zin UX is a very novel approach to creating a dive watch, an extreme depth dive watch. And it, its origins are, are seen with Zin back in the days when they worked with some Bell and Rosses as well. Because one does see some older Bell and Ross models which were rated to 8,000 8, meters and 11,000 meters for their water resistance. Now, this is worlds apart from the, the maximum of 1,000 or 2,000 meters, which one normally sees from extreme dive watches, with of course some marked exceptions like the Rolex Deep Sea going down to 3,900. But certainly the water resistance of this watch is, is quite remarkable, sitting at 5,000, although that's not the whole story really. But starting at the beginning, this watch is made out of a particular type of submarine steel which is a very corrosion-resistant, also very magnetism-resistant type of steel, which is used by Zinn and also by the German Navy for their submarines. And the case is 44mm by 13.3mm, making it large but not unwieldy in terms of its sizing. To add to this, one has what is known as a D3 crown, which is a proprietary technology which allows the crown to be screwed directly into the case, rather than being screwed into a separate crown tube, and the result of this is a much tighter seal around that area, whilst the bezel is also built to, to standards which are very impressive and typical of Zinn, being tegumented, which is a surface treatment, which allows the surface of the bezel to, to be extremely hard and scratch resistant, whilst also allowing the, the bezel to, to have this proprietary type of, uh, of captive bezel technology, where the bezel is screwed into the, uh, the case mounting. And so this allows the bezel to, to be lodged, um, lodged there, irrespective of whether it's knocked or bumped, which is often a problem with some bezels, that if they're, uh, they're, they're clipped by something, or a sharp blow or knock, they will come off the watch, which is not something you'll have with this timepiece. And also, whilst I'm speaking about the tegumenting process, the whole watch can be finished this way for an extra €250 Euros upon order. And if one goes beneath that anti-reflective sapphire crystal on the front of the watch, and the incredibly highly legible dial, with that red and uh, white and black style of coloration, one finds the, the most interesting part of this watch, which is the interplay between the movement, which is a quartz movement, and the filling of the case, which is a very clear type of oil. And the movement inside this watch is the ETA 955.652, which is a high precision chronometer quartz movement with also a high torque style of, uh, of build, which means that it, that it can push the second hand, and indeed all of the hands, through a filling of oil. And this movement is also thermocompensated, which is traditionally the biggest, uh, biggest enemy of a quartz movement, which is that change in temperature. And of course, it's also anti-magnetic with seven joules at its bearings to make the movement last longer and be serviceable like a mechanical movement. But the true brilliance of choosing a quartz movement for this watch is seen in the operation of the water resistance of the timepiece. Because this watch is filled with very clear oil, and the purpose of this is to fill the inside of the case instead of air, and this has several benefits. Firstly, and perhaps least importantly, it means that the inside of the movement is protected from moisture, and whilst this is a key, key important role, its other role, which is to, to be able to, to resist the pressure of the deep sea, is all the more important. Because of course, the, the problem with most watch cases is that being filled with air means that the, pre the, the density rather of the inside of the case is far less than the water around it, and so it's able to be crushed. However, by contrast, once they've filled this with the oil, it has a very similar sort of density to the outside uh, water, and so one's able to have a situation where the pressure pushing inwards of this, this water column above it is less than the pressure pushing outwards of the oil inside the case. And so by this way, the case is able to not be crushed despite being put under incredible strain, which would normally require a case to be incredibly thick and very heavily built, where this case is much more modest in its sizing, and can be much more, more, more easy to wear and, and much more usable for more wrists. But also one should note that whilst the movement is rated to 5,000 metres, as a result of the pressure being applied to it, one does have a situation where the actual case is impervious to water and has no known crush depth. Now, Zinn state 12,000 metres, but that's beyond the greatest depth that one sees in the ocean. So to all intents and purposes, this case will never be crushed. And so I think it is entirely reasonable to say this watch shows a fascinating reinterpretation of the function of a quartz movement, 
because of course a mechanical movement could never operate within oil just due to the resistance of operating in that sort of environment, but quartz proves to be the ideal sort of counterpart to this style of environment, and its benefits in terms of accuracy and resistance to the elements are very, very impressive, making this watch a really fascinating example of a technical application of quartz. This following watch is a rather curious one, and certainly one which turned a lot of heads when it was released a few years ago. And this is the Citizen EcoDrive 1, and it's a piece which I've spoken about relatively occasionally on this channel, and certainly I think a piece which deserves more attention than it does receive. Because this watch comes in a couple of different versions, ranging between 40 and 39mm in diameter, so similar sizes, but the shapes are rather different depending upon the model. But the crucial thing about these watches is that they are only 2.98mm thick. Now they do state that there can be a small variation in this thickness, I assume due to the way the crystal is pressed in, or whether the case back sits flush, and, and various small discrepancies of this sort, but this is still a watch which is immensely slender, and a watch which is slender in its entirety, and much more thin than one would see from most mechanical movements. Indeed, ultra-slim mechanical movements are often thicker than this entire watch, which I think is quite staggering. Of course, one does have to note that there have been some examples of mechanical movements more slim than this watch, and certainly the one example um, of this would be the concept version of the Piaget Altiplano, released last year. However, that watch, and I think it's crucial to note, was only 2mm thick, but can't be worn and requires a special tool just to turn the crown to wind up the watch, nor does it have a complete dial or handset. And so I think perhaps it would be misleading to say that that watch was actually more slender than this piece, which I think to all intents and purposes is the slimmest watch you can possibly get hold of, as well as the fact that that watch was a concept and has never been sold. But this watch has a 1mm thick movement, which is truly staggering from a mechanical perspective, and one does even have to note the fact that this watch doesn't have a second hand due to the additional thickness that would add to this timepiece. The crystal similarly has to be immensely thin to fit onto the top of the watch, and is supported around its entirety by this sort of uh, chapter ring which sits underneath the crystal. Now the case itself comes in a variety of versions, with more smooth versions which come on a metal bracelet, or versions um, which have a, a more, more angular shape which come on a leather strap. Now both have similar dimensions, um, depending upon the version, and it should be noted that the, the clasp, in fact, on the bracelet version is thicker than the watch head, which I think is, is baffling. Of course, it should also be noted that this watch has a movement which is fundamentally different to most other quartz movements, because rather than having the, uh, the addition of a large battery and the components which allow, would allow the, a watch to work for several years and have the battery changed periodically, this piece instead opts to go within the EcoDrive style of, of rechargeable watch seen from Citizen. And so the dial actually acts as a solar panel, and thus is able to recharge the battery which lasts 10 months. And someone's able to simply recharge this by wearing it on the wrist in, in sunlight, which allows this watch to, to really take advantage of its, uh, its surroundings, and make it uh, altogether more practical as a watch which can still remain incredibly slim, but whilst also having the advantage of, uh, of a long battery life, or in fact an indefinite battery life until the, the movement eventually needs servicing. But the one key problem with a lot of ultra-slim watches, and especially when one gets to the realms of a watch which is so enormously slim as this piece, one has a problem with bending, and this has been a problem for a great deal of watches in this sort of area, and is, is an area of consideration, especially when the crystal is incredibly slim, and there really isn't much resistance to this, this form of bending. And so Citizen have come up with quite an interesting technology on the bezel, and you'll note the bezel is held in place by screws, and because this bezel is the main strong point of the watch. And the bezel is made out of ceramet, which is a, a combination of metal and ceramic, to create a very bend-resistant part to the watch, to act as sort of a skeleton for the rest of the case and prevent it from bending. Which I think is a very clever idea, and which really takes advantage of the, the design of this piece to provide uh, optimal wear and, uh, and usability for uh, a regular wearer. And so this piece, which really takes advantage of the benefits of quartz, is able to be offered for between 2,600 US dollars and 3,500, depending upon the version and the various uh, metals used. But I think either way, this is quite a remarkable piece in terms of technology, and also in terms of being something truly different on the market. Now, the penultimate piece I'd like to speak about is not so much a watch so much as a family. And this is the Grand Seiko 9F Quartz Movement, a real legend of the luxury quartz industry, and a watch which I think is the direct child, if you will, of the period of ultra-high-end quartz of the 1970s and 80s. And whilst this is my opinion, I think the way this watch is built is not to be a cut-budget version of automatic or spring-drive uh, models from Grand Seiko, but rather a completely different family which offers something to a slightly different customer. And the origins of this piece uh, came in 1993 when it superseded the 9581, which was the previous quartz movement used by Grand Seiko. And this movement provided uh, a very real um, adversary 
for any quartz movement provided by other brands in terms of sheer accuracy and attention to detail. Now, Grand Seiko make a real point of, of demonstrating the fact these watches are assembled entirely by hand, and the movements really are the product of a, a single watchmaker focusing on this whilst another watchmaker takes care of the case. And this demonstrates their attention to detail, which is also seen in the fact they're fully metal built, with this, uh, this, de this decoration which is seen throughout. I find the care taken whilst, whilst assembling these movements is very well demonstrated by the fact that the tweezers they use um, are polished several times a day just to keep their edges sharp enough to be able to, to, uh, to suitably be able to assemble these pieces, which I think is very impressive. But technologically these pieces are also very impressive in terms of their design and their build, where these really are absolutely uh, equal to the quality of Grand Seiko automatic or spring drive movements. And the accuracy of this watch is very impressive, with an accuracy of between 5 seconds and 10 seconds a year, depending upon the version, with some limited editions with the, the higher accuracy and standard models with a slightly lower accuracy, but either way one's getting incredible accuracy. Whilst these watches can be regulated via that plus or minus um, symbol, which you can see at the bottom of the, the movement there. Then one has to note that these movements are thermocompensated in a way which other movements aren't. And whilst for other movements, uh, the thermocompensating element of a movement can be very power draining, these have a very efficient system, which doesn't have any real impact on battery life, but does allow the movement to, to test its temperature 540 times a day, and thus be able to adjust to that to be more accurate, which can create quite a large discrepancy after several months, if, if not, uh, not fitted to these movements. In order to give long-term accuracy, these movements also have some sealed components within them, and so this is to say that they're sealed from the elements, um, so once they've been serviced, they're actually contained separately from the rest of the movement to allow oils to last much longer without degrading and allow the watch to run much more smoothly for longer periods of time. And one point which does discern and differentiate these movements from other options on the market is the motion of the hands. And this starts with the gearing of the, uh, the crown, which means that you can set the, the hands much more accurately than, than with other watches, which is a benefit, especially for a watch where you really are going to be able to rely on that accuracy but also they use elements such as a hairspring to account for the shudder usually seen when the second hand moves, and thus allows the second hand to hit the indices each time, rather than ending up between them, which can be an irritation. One also has a setup which means that each of the hands operate on different axes in order to avoid any interference when changing the time, which can also lead to inaccuracies, and there is also the addition of a twin pulse control motor to move the hands, which gives increased torque by allowing two impulses to push the hands per second, rather than just the one which, whilst it can't be seen uh, to the naked eye, allows the hands to move more, sm more smoothly and also more accurately to display the correct time. And so I think as general products, these movements are, are incredible and really are in line with mechanical movements in terms of the care taken to make truly reliable options on the market. And so I think it would be unfair to mark these as anything other than, uh, than luxury items, which simply offer a, a different approach to providing superlative accuracy, which is what you would expect from a luxury timepiece. Now this final watch is a fascinating example of watchmaking, and something which is so fundamentally different to other options on the market, that I think it certainly deserves a, uh, a title of its own, because it does sit somewhere outside the normal realms of a quartz watch, where a lot of the principles of beautiful movements seen in mechanical watchmaking have been applied to a quartz movement. And this piece is the FP Jaune Elegante 48mm, and this piece comes in titanium, although there are several treatments of that titanium, so I'll talk about that slightly later. But the dimensions of this watch are 48mm by 40mm by 7.95mm, making this watch a wearable size, although on the large side, especially for FP Jean, although with that slim case which is conforming to the wrist due to its, uh, its curved case back, does give a, a very interesting perspective on a sort of a, a luxury sports watch, which really is where I would, I would say this watch aims in a direction which is similar to that of the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. The design of the watch is also very pleasing with this screwed-on bezel, with a mix of brushed and polished finishes to give a more varied look, and whilst I know that this watch has been looked down upon by a lot of F.P. Jean lovers, because F.P. Jean really is known for its, uh, its mechanical work, and indeed F.P. Jean himself is known for, uh, for real mastery of the horological trade, I think this piece demonstrates something very different. But the cues are still there with those uh, proprietary style hands here in blued steel, as you can see, as well as having that crown, which has that particular form which is so typical of the brand. And looking at the front of the watch under the sapphire crystal, one can see a dial which is semi skeletonized but, but more on that in a moment, and the surface of the dial is a, um, a type of sapphire, which is then given a, a treatment of superluminova, so the whole dial loot lights up at, uh, at night in order to give extremely high legibility to whoever wants to read the watch, which I think is an interesting feature, and is a nice alternative to having to have luminous hands. And that small skeletonized component on the dial 
suggests something far more grandiose than the normal quartz movement inside the watch. And this is the proprietary calibre 1210. And this is a movement which is thoroughly beautifully decorated if one looks through the sapphire case back, which shows a, a setup with a great deal of gold um, actually built into the movement, which is beautifully decorated as though a mechanical movement, with circuitry which has been arranged to be aesthetically pleasing, with a small heart visible as well on the back of the movement. And this is an 18 joule 3.13 mm thick quartz movement, which has an 8 to 10, uh, power, 8 to 10 year power reserve with constant use, but also has one interesting trick up its sleeve. Because if you leave this watch stationary for extended periods of time, that's to say over half an hour, the hands stop moving. And when you pick the watch up again, via that small sensor, which you can see in the form of a rotor on the dial side through the skeletonized hole in the movement, when this moves, the whole watch leaps back into mo motion, and thus will return to the correct time. And through this sort of standby mode, it's able to last 18 years without changing the battery if you leave the watch stationary. And I think this is a wonderful demonstration of F. Pigeon's prowess, in creating an interesting movement irrespective of the technology used, be it mechanical or quartz. And there is also one other alternative to this watch, which is the case because whilst the standard version is titanium, you can also get the watch with what they call a T-tail surface, and what this is is titanium, which is plasma treated and thus creates an oxide layer on the top of the titanium all over the case. And this gives better resistance to bumps, scratches and also to corrosion, which does give a much darker look to the, um, the titanium of the case, but I think it's something interesting to consider if you are in the market for one of these pieces as something a bit different and perhaps a bit more robust than the standard version. Though, of course, the standard version is more versatile and a thoroughly beautiful piece altogether. And so I'll conclude this video here, but do tell me in the comments down below what you thought of this video and indeed of my choices within it. Also, do follow me on Instagram uh, under Arm on the Watch Guy to see more horological content, uh, pictures, videos, and also the intros from my, my reviews, which uh, can be interesting in their own right. And if you did enjoy the video, then do please like, share, and subscribe to help the channel, and also to be able to see more videos and content here in future. So thank you very much for watching. This is Arm on the Watch Guy, out.